Good evening. My name is Bob Bratz. I'm the director of alumni engagement at Raven College. And what a wonderful night. Snow falling in Bethlehem. Alumni awards could be more perfect. Thank you all for being here tonight. Congratulations to all the award recipients and to all the family members who have supported them throughout the years. At this time, my honor to introduce Willie Reynolds, Vice President of the Alumni Board, who is our Master of Ceremonies tonight. Willie Reynolds, thank you. First of all, I'd like to uh, wish you a welcome to Bethlehem. One of the things I do on the side is I'm on city council here in Bethlehem. It's always great when I see so many people coming into our city. I like to say that one of the secret weapons we have in Bethlehem and Arabian College is we have the Christmas season. Uh, when you look around the world, you see so much anger and so much uh, animosity going on. I think one of the things that makes Bethlehem special is the opportunity to come here, and we really are what a community should be about. And we've been that way since 1742. I'm delighted that you can join us as we recognize the accomplishments of current students and the extraordinary achievements and invaluable service of our alumni. In addition to this year's award recipients, we are proud to have a number of past award recipients here with us tonight. I would like to ask each previous recipient to stand as I call your name so that we may recognize you. Uh, Robert Gratz, 1975. You started speaking to make sure I didn't forget you there. Um, Bernie, Bernie Francis Nicely, 69. Uh, Lynn Mushlitz Labar, 1985. Jeffrey Roche, 2008. And Denise Torma, 1977. I'm sorry, we do have one more uh, recipient here. Okay, and I also want to thank everybody for coming here for the award recipients tonight. Um, I also want to thank Ken Rampola, a member of the class of 1979, and the chairman of the Board of Trustees for being with us tonight. Please, Ken is here. And we are also especially pleased that Moravian's president, Dr. Brian Grigsby, can share in our celebration this evening. A 1990 graduate of Moravian, President Grigsby's enthusiasm, vision, and leadership continues to transform the Moravian community and inspire alumni who have met him since the, his arrival in July of 2013. And those of us that live here in Bethlehem and the Lehigh Valley, we understand that there's a palpable excitement around Moravian College, and there's a sense that things are getting done. And I think one of the great things about President Grigsby is every time that you see him, he doesn't just remind us about what Moravian was or what Moravian is, but even more about what Moravian can be. Um, so it's my privilege to introduce him this evening, so he may bring you his greetings. President Grigsby. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And because we're also made Moravian College and all embracing Happy Hanukkah, Happy Prophet's Day, whatever your faith tradition, you are welcome here at Moravian. Um, Moravian current students have a saying on the back of some shirts, call one hound, the entire pack comes running. This is also recognize one hound, the entire pack comes running. So uh, congratulations because this is about you. This is about recognizing your accomplishments here. Sitting up uh, b before with Ken, Rusk uh, came up and, and said, uh, thanks for this. And Ken said, we didn't do anything. We're just recognizing that Deb did it. Uh, so that, but that is part of this, is to recognize the contribution that this college has given into making who you are. Um, and recognizing the current students that are here and the contribution they are making. How were you transformed because of this place? One of the greatest moments as a faculty member or president 
is watching a 17 or 18 year old come across Convenience Hall and shake my hand. It's sweaty, <laughs> it's not very strong, they barely look you in the eye, and they move across. That same person, by 22, is barely a shadow of the person that was there at 17. That transformation that has happened because of this wonderful place, because of these wonderful faculty members and staff members, makes all the difference in the world. And so tonight, we're going to recognize you and this institution as it helps transform past generations and future generations. Because all of you guys right there in that second row are going to be hounds, right? <laughs> so tonight's your night. Congratulations. I look forward to spending many, many hours talking about the ways that this college transformed you and made you who you are. Thank you. Thank you, President Gregsby. Um, I am delighted uh, to present our 2017 Alumni Fellows Awards. Uh, these awards are given in recognition of academic excellence, leadership, and service to Moravian and the greater community. And this year, like most, it was very challenging to decide with just four students to be awarded this honor. And we will be rejoined by Mr. Bob Gratz to uh, present those students. Thank you. Please, before we go any further, make sure all your electronic devices are turned off. I'm checking mine too. Thank you. I'm delighted to present our 2017 Alumni Fellows. These awards are given in recognition of academic, leadership, and service to Moravian and the greater community. This year, like most, it's challenging to decide on just four students. Very challenging. These four students are not only exceptional students academically, but they've been exceptional leaders on our campus, the local community, and the wider world. They've distinguished themselves from various leadership positions, athletic achievements, community service, and countless clubs and organizations. Each student will receive a framed certificate in recognition of their outstanding achievement and a $250 scholarship. As I read your name, please come forward to receive your certificate and be recognized for your achievement. Then remain standing in front of the stage until all the student recipients have received their certificates. The first, Mary Kay Duncan. Mary Kay, please come forward. Mary Kay is a senior public health major an NCAA Division III Women's National Javelin Champion. She has not had this. She did not bring the javelin with her tonight. <laughs> I asked. <laughs> she serves the Moravian community as the president of the Public Health Club, the Bethlehem community by interning at both the Lehigh Valley Health Network and St. Luke's in addition to mentoring students at William Penn Elementary. It is my honor to present Mary Kate as one of our 2017 alumni fellows. Mary Kate. Adriana Fasciano. Adriana is quite the leader on campus. She serves in a variety of committees such as the Search for Hiring Committees, the Middle States Reaccreditation Committee for the college, as well as being a student alumni representative, a resident advisor, and a 26-point student ambassador. When not busy with all of those activities, Adriana can be found studying neuroscience as she plans to attend medical school to be a physician after her graduation next year. 
It is my pleasure to name Adriana as one of the 2017 alumni fellows. is having them stand there waiting for this all to be done. <laughs> Eric Morton. <laughs> Eric is a senior counseling psychology major. He spends much of his time outside the class helping with a variety of philanthropic and community service activities with the Black Student Union, participating in the track and field team, or mentoring his peers as a senior resident advisor. Eric is proud of his leadership roles at Wayne College, and we are proud of him. Congratulations. Thank you. Vaughn Tempesta. Vaughn has revitalized the Moravian LGBTQ organization on campus and has helped to develop numerous resources for our LGBTQ students. When not taking on these new initiatives, he may be found serving as a leader of the Greyhound Pride, which helps freshmen in diverse cultural backgrounds adjust to Moravian or in the classroom studying <coughs> physics. As a junior, Vaughn has another year and a half to continue to make Moravian a better place for future Greyhounds. It's my pleasure to name Vaughn in 2017 Alumni College. Yep, that's good. Congratulations again to all of our uh, student uh, recipients this evening, and we will now be turning to our alumni recipients. Uh, the Emerging Leader Award is given to a young alumnus or alumna who graduated within the last 10 years and has actively supported Moravian and has, and, and has demonstrated leadership in alumni programming. This year's recipient has been a leader for alumni and students alike. Here to present Hakeem Myers, 2009 or 2016 Emerging Leader, is Moravian's Director of Major Gifts, Julia Anastasio, 2007. Julia? Thank you, Lily, and welcome everyone to Moravian. I'm Julia Atanasio. I graduated in 2007, and as Lily mentioned, I work at Moravian now in institutional advancement. So, I'm here to present Hakeem Myers, who I went to school with and had the pleasure of working with as an alumni volunteer. And there is a quote featured in this building from an admissions advertisement from long ago which says, let your college experience be one that is pleasant, but above all, think of it as preparation for your contribution to the human experience. And Hakeem Myers, our 2017 emerging leader is someone that comes to my mind when I read that quote. Hakeem genuinely cares about others and contributing to the human experience. We've been fortunate to benefit from Hakeem's gregariousness and have him involved with the college in various capacities for the past several years and see him in action. True to the purpose of this award, Hakeem has dedicated much of his free time to Moravian. He has served as a member of the Moravian Leadership Council, returns to campus for alumni events, and attends networking receptions to provide advice to students about discovering and pursuing their passion. Dr. Katie Desiderio, Chair of the Economics and Business Department, 
shared with me that Hakeem not only accepts opportunities to connect with students, alumni, faculty, and staff, but even more, he does so with such positive energy that he leaves those he works with feeling like they can conquer the world. That's so true. I'm still doing some additional research, but I'm almost certain that when Hakeem enrolled as a freshman at Moravian, he must have signed up for the deluxe admissions package that included the tiny script which read, in addition to making the most of your four years at Moravian, you will also be a faithful alumnus, give back financially, and do whatever is in your power to help students find their way. When my colleagues and I are strategizing about which alumni to engage with various initiatives each year, Hakeem's name is always recommended as someone we know who will be helpful. Backpack to briefcase, Hakeem is there giving advice to students about the bridge between college and the workforce. Homecoming, Hakeem is there mingling with nearly every single era of alumni at the tailgate. Comenius Society dinner, Hakeem is there and likely sporting something blue and gray, as he is this evening. <laughs> the New York City Student Alumni Networking event, Hakeem is there introducing students to fellow alumni to help them make professional connections. I'd also like to add on a personal note that he has very good taste in music. And one of my most cherished memories from when Hakeem and I were in college together was when we sang an impromptu Frank Sinatra's The Summer Wind <laughs> together at a party because it's how we met. <laughs> He's not always at Moravian, though. He does have a job. And in fact, he has been making impressive professional strides in the field of talent acquisition by building upon his natural ability to see the best in people. Since graduating from Moravian, Hakeem has always included his alma mater in his life and paid homage to his Moravian roots. His friends shared with me via Kristen Gratz, class of 2008, whether it was in the classroom, on the lacrosse field, participating in alumni events, or supporting a friend, Hakeem is the type of person that can always be counted on to show up and put everything he has into any task assigned. He is reliable and he is determined and has worked incredibly hard to achieve all he has accomplished. He truly embodies the qualities and values of a Greyhound and is more than deserving of this award. Please join me in congratulating one of Moravian College's leaders, Hakeem Myers, class of 2000. Just eight years ago, I was receiving my bachelor's degree with no idea where life would take me. I'd like to start by thanking my family for all their support throughout the years. The values they instilled in me are the reason that I stand before you here today. What I hope that you all take away from this evening starts with something my mom taught me at a young age. Never stop learning. Those are simple words that have given me strength to take advantage of every opportunity to experience something new to make uncomfortable decisions so that I'm able to understand perspective in different scenarios. And lastly, to be myself, which I'm still learning how to do today. There are endless opportunities when you're not afraid to put yourself in a situation to capitalize on what we know of as fate. As for Moravian, you all know the saying, it's a great day to be a hound. For me, that statement is true each and every day. I wake up proud of what my alma mater has given me, and I'm excited about the opportunities that, that are still to come. I have a ton of thank yous when it comes to Moravian. There are people in this room who literally fought for me to be able to finish my degree, and they still support me today. That's the beauty in life. As, you, as I look back now, I understand more and more that they never had to. Individual treatment has never been part of the job description. President Grigsby speaks of how alma mater means soul mother. This always sticks with me because Moravian as a whole has been there for me in that capacity. From the moment I first visited and was taken back by the warmth of the environment, I was able to create a home away from home through the different interactions and experiences. Education means the world to me. I can't think of a single situation where it hasn't benefited me. As I look back, I know I wasn't always as appreciative of what I was given 
but that's the learning experience. Today, it all comes full circle. As a recipient of the Emerging Leader Award, I hope to continue creating opportunities for the youth to learn. I look in the crowd, I see a ton of future hounds. Through them, we all have a future to hope in. Whether it's Eric Moravian or my two beautiful nieces at home, I hope I can instill them how truly valuable education is. Thank you all for this wonderful opportunity. The Young Alumni Achievement Award is given in recognition of the outstanding professional achievement of an alumna or alumnus who graduated from Raven without, within the last 10 years. Here to present Virginia Hinders 2007, our 2017 Young Alumni Achievement Award recipient for her extraordinary work in the field of linguistics is Jeffrey Roche, 2008. When I think of Virginia, or as most of us refer to her, Ginny, I immediately think of service. Service to children, service to those less fortunate, service to the international community, and truly service to all. As a student at Moravian College, Ginny truly personified the concept of service to others. Let's take a stroll down Ginny's service at Moravian, which included Model NATO, where she represented our alma mater through diplomacy in Washington, D.C with colleges like Yale and Harvard. And she did it fairly, fairly fiercely at times. Leadership, where we together learned about leading and serving others with integrity, always at the center of all that we do. And Amnesty International, where she advocated sometimes loudly for human rights of children, women, and society, both domestically and internationally. It doesn't stop there. Habitat for Humanity, where she helped build homes for single moms and families in tremendous need. And sometime, all of you can ask her about the time we were there together. And I told one of the young little boys that was moving into the home to just ask her out to see what she may say. <laughs> Ginny's service also included the Learning Center, or the Learning Connection, and AmeriCorps Scholars in Service in Pennsylvania. In our time at Moravian, there was truly no bigger advocate of service to children than Ginny. If you ask Phyllis Walsh, the now retired Director of Community Service, I'm sure she would tell you the same. Janie's service also took her to student government, residence life, and also Zeta Tau Alpha. I was fortunate to be a part of, of many of the same organizations and service learning opportunities, and I can attest to the fact that Janie has truly always wanted to change the world for the better through service to others. Since her biography will speak a little bit more about what she does today professionally, I just wanted to also share that I believe service is also something that she looked for in a husband. Jenny's wonderful husband, PJ, served in the Air Force for nearly nine years. And I can vividly remember Jenny telling me how proud she was of his service to our nation. PJ, we thank you for your service and for truly serving alongside Jenny, even today, as you now have become Maryland's known animal ambassadors. In knowing Jenny since 2005, I have been fortunate to also get to know her family. Without question, I know that Jenny's parents, Donald and Jerry, have always supported and loved her for who she is and for whom she has become. Jenny truly comes from a loving family that has opened their home for many other Moravian alum, and I like myself. I can vividly remember staying with them when Jenny and I worked together at summer camp, and then also I stayed with Jenny and PJ when I interned on Capitol Hill. The Wilkins and Hinders families are truly devoted to service, and most importantly, helping others. For those reasons, in addition to all of Jenny's wonderful professional achievements, I cannot think of a Moravian alumni more deserving of this year's prestigious Young Alumni Achievement Award. Jenny, congratulations from Rebecca, Corbin, Gavin, and I, and go Hounds. Thank you to the Alumni Association. It's so wonderful to be back here at Moravian. 
I want to thank my parents for supporting me and transferring to Moravian College. I didn't originally start here. I transferred my freshman year halfway through. It was important to me to come to Moravian because of the opportunities that students here had and still have today that you miss going to other colleges and universities. The first being our small classroom sizes. Our teachers knew our names. We weren't just a number or a face. They learned our hobbies, our passions, our dreams, and they took value in that and really encouraged us to pursue them, whether they be here locally or internationally. The extracurricular activities we had at Moravian are like none that you see at many small schools. As Jeffrey mentioned, we had the opportunity to represent uh, Moravian College and Model NATO in Washington, D.C. And through that, we were able to meet with cultural attaches from various foreign embassies to help coach us throughout that weekend. We also had the opportunity to study abroad, where I got to take foreign language classes and further my Spanish <coughs> education. And also just the ability to become involved with student government, with residence life, those are the lessons that you will take with you that will shape your further career. You will learn things that you will carry with you always. And Moravian to me, as Jeffrey said, means service. Service at Moravian was building houses at Clemson over our spring break vacation, mentoring underprivileged students with the learning connection. And through Phyllis Walsh and the community service organization, I had the opportunity to be the first year of AmeriCorps at Moravian. And that is such an exceptional opportunity for our students that other colleges don't offer today. And that true lesson of service is one that I hope all of our students carry in their hearts past their years at Moravian into their career and personal lives. And furthermore, I wanted to just comment on the relationships you make here at Moravian, whether it be staff, faculty, fellow students, these are the friendships, the relationships that you will carry with you the rest of your lives. So really take stock in those and value those. And tonight I'd like to congratulate my fellow <coughs> awardees and just thank all of you for your amazing accomplishments and your achievements. We are all so proud to be a hound. Thank you. of Raven's founder, Countess Benigna von Tinsendorf, Raven has long produced dedicated educators who are innovative leaders and advocates for education. In recognition of the important role our Moravian alumni have played in the field of education, the Alumni Association is proud to give the Benigna Education Award. Here to present the 2017 Benigna Education Award recipient, Cindy Stein, 1979, is Dr. Jane Berger, Assistant Pre Professor of History. I teach history here at Moravian College. But I'm not here tonight as a professor. I'm here instead as a parent. My daughter, Leanne, had Cindy Stein when she was in the first grade, and I'm joined by her and some of her fellow classmates. They've come to help us celebrate a really tremendously outstanding first grade teacher. As a professor here, I got an email requesting a nomination for an education prize, and I knew immediately who I had to nominate. I want to thank uh, Jill Moran, the principal of James Buchanan, who helped me with the letter. I've noticed that a lot of times over the years, PhDs and administrators win this prize. But those of you who are parents know that there's no, much, no one more important than the classroom teachers. They're the ones who do the magic, and Cindy Stein is just outstanding. But let's let the children really tell you what's so great about Mrs. Stein after we lower the microphone. <laughs> We had Mrs. Stein when we were in first grade. Recently, we had a meeting to decide what we were going to say at this ceremony. We thought of adjectives that describe Mrs. Stein. Some of the adjectives we came up with were inspiring, dedicated, creative, energetic, caring, 
extraordinary, adventurous, helpful, amazing, and unique. One of the reasons one of the reasons we came up with those words so easily is because Mrs. Stein taught us the, about the importance of using descriptive language in our writing. <laughs> we wrote a lot of we wrote a lot of stories in Mrs. Stein's class when we did writer workshops. After we wrote our stories, we worked with classmates, class classmates to give and get feedback on our descriptive language, dialogue, onomatopoeia, and illustration. Okay. When we finished our stories, we voted on who should win the Coldicott Medal. Five of my stories won Coldicotts and I was very proud. Mrs. Stein helped us become amazing and creative writers. Another thing is Mrs. Stein had was mystery readers. Every week, a student's parent or older sibling or relative came to the class to read a book and bring us in. <laughs> we never knew who the mystery reader was going to be. Miss Stein gave us three clues about the person and let us guess. It was fun. If we got too excited, Miss Stein would just say, oh, class, and we all settled down. <laughs> After we guessed the mystery reader, the person came into the classroom. Then the student related to the person stood up to introduce the guest in the class. I was nervous but excited when I got to introduce my parents. My mother read a middle of a daily, and when, when my father came, he read where the wild things are. He even dressed up for the part. Because of Miss Stein and mystery readers, a lot of parents felt connected to the class and school. In fact, all of our parents are here with us today because of how much they care about Mrs. Stein. Mrs. Stein found a lot of ways to make us excited about coming to school. One time, we got our stuffed animals in for a sleepover. They stayed at school for this weekend, and they got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> when we got back on Monday, there were McDonald's and pizza boxes all over the place. The classroom was a mess. Our principal was mad, and our stuffed animals got detention. <laughs> and another time, we got to wear our pajamas to school, have a party, and watch the Polar Express. Mrs. Stein also always thought of a lot of ways to make us feel special. Everyone loved the days they got to be the star. The star got to do the calendar, run errands, and be the line leader. As you can see, Mrs. Stein is beloved by her recent current students and for the many others she nurtured and educated over the year. We're very excited to be here and extremely proud to be able to present her with this award. We love you, Mrs. Stein. Dr. Berger and Leah, um, and all my first graders that are now fifth graders. I'm truly honored by your invitation to share this lovely evening surrounded by family, friends, faculty, and alumni of Marion College. The children's author, author Patricia Polacco, began writing at age 41. She writes what she desired most in life is to learn to read. She began reading at age 14 when her classroom teacher, Mr. Jo George Falker, took an interest in his new student and spent many hours after school teaching her to read. Patricia had dyslexia. In her book, Thank You, Mr. Falker, which is your gift to me when you left first grade, um, 
She wrote this dedication. You will forever be my hero. Doesn't everyone have their own personal heroes in life? Tonight, I'd like to celebrate my heroes. Just like Patricia Polacco, family was my introduction to the world. My mom, the only one in her generation to be born in the United States, early on took the sole responsibility for raising my brothers and me. As my role model for life, she taught me many values. From her own personal challenges, I learned that one must persevere. Like Polacco, I set my goals early. I was going to be a first grade teacher. Mm -hmm. My dear brothers would sometimes indulge me by playing school with me. Mm -hmm. Although they were almost six years older than me, you guessed it, I was the teacher. <laughs> my cousins were already teachers in Philadelphia. They would invite me to join them in their elementary classrooms. These experiences heightened my desire to teach. I was going to be a great teacher. I entered Moravian College on a full academic scholarship. Selecting a major was easy. I met Dr. Delendick and enrolled in my first education course. As a sophomore and junior at Moravian, you had many opportunities to work in classroom settings with small groups of students. I was going to be a great teacher. In the fall of 1978, I began student teaching in fifth grade classroom. My roommates, Judy and Roberto, watched as Mary and I rose early, dressed like teachers, and headed off to school. They listened to our adventures at dinner. I was going to be a great teacher. But our adventures soon turned to anxiety and tears. Teaching was a hard job. I was not going to be a great teacher. Fortunately for me, Dr. Delendick was my supervisor. In my darkest hour, he encouraged me to stay, stay the course. Without his support that fall semester, my hopes and dreams would have died. As Hillary Clinton said, it takes a village. There were tenured teachers that shared their talents and hints, like Nancy Sullivan, a Maine State Teacher of the Year, with whom I worked with early in my career, and Linda Zacker, my cousin and fellow first grade teacher, who offered me advice throughout my career. Recently, at James Buchanan, Mrs. Omdahl, a reading specialist, and Dr. LaBelle, a school psychologist, provided a knowledgeable sound, sounding board to test my ideas. Finally, the principals that I had the honor to work with. Mr. Barry Dubbs, Mrs. Mary Catherine Tahoski, and Ms. Jill Moran. They taught me so much about children and teaching. They modeled a holistic approach to interacting with children. They taught me that teachers do more than educate. They must care for and care about their students. Even before the days of No Child Left Behind, they understood that all children really meant all. They taught me that each challenge I faced afforded me a new opportunity to grow professionally and emotionally. They trusted me to deliver the curriculum in a manner that I believed to be beneficial for my classroom family. It is important for teachers to understand we do not know all the answers. By, but by seeking support of others, we can create the opportunity for everyone to learn. My student teachers from Moravian share new ideas with me that they learn from professors Mojedity and Fluck. Together, we work to refine their lessons. As I always told them, failure is not an option. Teaching did not come naturally to me, and my first student teaching experience was nothing short of a disaster. So years later, as I began to mentor these new teachers, I wanted them to succeed both for themselves and my students that were in their charge. Although sharing my classroom was a, cha was a challenge personally, I knew it was important to honor my role models and pe pay it forward. <coughs> School was a wonderful place, full of smiling faces, warm hugs, and F, U, N, fun. 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 <laughs> and on the way, we all learned. They learned from me, and I learned from them. Yes, Moravian provided me with a future that afforded me the best life could offer. Friends and their families that I could count as my own. A wonderful husband, my best friend for over 40 years, David Stein, who supported my dreams. He was there to hear my stories and help me work through my challenges. As a father to my two sons, Josh and Alex, he reached beyond co-parenting, balancing his medical practice with cooking dinners, helping with homework, coaching, chauffeuring, and even attending a Mother's Day tea. 
once. <laughs> we were a great tag team delivering a powerful punch that translated into two wonderful gifted children. It takes a village. And these people here with me tonight are my heroes. Thank you. My script says I'm supposed to say thank you, Cindy, but I think I have to say thank you, Mrs. Stein. Uh, and I also, uh, I did some quick math in my head, and I believe, uh, President Griggs, we, we have room in the class of 2029 for the whole fifth grade class of uh, James Buchanan. Uh, one of the special things, I think, when you go to school in Bethlehem, as many of us did, is you run into teachers that truly are special. Mrs. Stein, and there are many others out there. And only later on do you realize, oh, you're a Moravian grad too. And when, when you realize it right away, um, when you have the opportunity to, to be around um, people that really have the opportunity to change lives. So thank you. Uh, each year, the Moravian College Alumni Association re recognizes an alumna or alumnus for his or her outstanding service to Moravian College and the Alumni Association with a Medallion of Merit Award. This is truly a very prestigious award because it is awarded to an alumna or alumnus for continued and exceptional dedication to Moravian. This year's recipient has and continues to serve countless hours with the Board of Trustees, has helped with several alumni events, and is well known throughout the Moravian community. Here to present the 2017 Medallion of Merit Award to Deborah McKinnon, 1973, is Gary Carney, Vice President for Advancement at Moravian. Thank you, Willie. Um, it is a great honor for me to be able to introduce Deb McKinnon as the recipient of the Medallion of Merit. The first time I met Deb was a little over seven years ago when I was at my first Board of Trustees meeting. And I clearly remember this woman who was chair of the Building and Grounds Committee giving this report, and I just thought, wow, this woman is impressive. Her report was concise, informative, and she just had a presence that made you know that this was someone who was very special. Following the meeting and before the dinner, we had a, a gathering and I had the opportunity to talk to, uh, to Deb. And she was so warm and gracious in welcoming me as a new member of the Moravian community, and I always remember that. So here, I came across this woman who is incredibly competent and also a warm and caring individual. At the next trustee meeting, she again was so impressive, but for a different reason. After she finished her report on buildings and grounds, she made the recommendation that the buildings and grounds committee be eliminated and folded into the finance committee. Now she's laughing, and this was not so that she was out of work. Uh, you know, actually the reason was it was able to provide a more effective and efficient operation of the Board of Trustees. And what was impressive about this, as I said, it was a completely selfless act on her part. And this became a hallmark of my association with Deb over the years. It was always about what was best for the college. As many others will attest to, Deb is someone you can always count on when you call her or ask for assistance. She is always willing to help host and sponsor alumni events in Washington, D.C. She is always willing to serve on committees. She serves on panels for the benefit of the students. And she always answers the bell, this is the advancement person, when there is a funding need for the college. Deb has served on the Board of Trustees for the past nine years and currently serves as the Secretary of the Board. As a board member, Deb is always supportive of the board priorities. When a board priority was to get more financial aid for students, Deb responded and established uh, an endowed scholarship fund 
in her mother, Elizabeth Oppinger's name, who is a 1930 graduate of the Women's College. She has also provided leadership level funding for other board priorities, such as the Collier Hall renovation and the Sally Breidigan McShevitz Center for Health Sciences. Again, the message is clear, whatever is best for the college. It is important to note that Deb did not do all of this alone. Her husband, Russ, has always been fully supportive of her involvement with the college and makes the trips oftentimes, as he has today, up to the college to be able to support her in her endeavors as a member of the Board of Trustees. The tremendous admiration and affection that Deb and Russ have for each other is always clearly evident when they are together. I've spoken more about Deb as a person and about her commitment to the college. However, I encourage you to read her biography and to look at the many professional and personal accomplishments she has had over the years. And now, it is my pleasure to ask Deborah Opplinger McKinnon, class of 1973, to please come forward and accept the Medallion of Merit for her outstanding service to Moravian College. so much for that lovely introduction and I'm very humbled and honored to be with all of you this evening to receive this award. Um, Gary mentioned my husband and when he learned I would be making some remarks he said well you know you don't have to talk too long all you have to do is say thanks Russ. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to share some other observations with all of you this evening. Moravian, for me, is steeped in tradition. And that tradition's played a special role in my life. My mother, as you heard, went to Moravian, and I followed her. For me, a family tradition. She was a music major. And that's about where the tradition stops there. No talent here. <laughs> but as a music major, she lived and went to classes here on South Campus. And as a woman at Moravian in the 1930s, South Campus was the women's college. And what we call North Campus today was the men's college. My freshman year, I lived on South Campus in Main Hall, just up the street. And just as it was for my mom, South Campus was all women. Now when I attended Moravian, it was co-ed, but South Campus continued that tradition of being all women. Now, tradition doesn't mean there isn't change. Tradition holds dear our key values, principles, but change happens. That force of change created new opportunities for new traditions. And change happened on Moravian's campus during my four years here. For those of us on South Campus, we went from having to dress for dinner Yes, and that meant a skirt or a dress, not slacks, my freshman year, to co-ed dorms on the North Campus by my senior year. Those four years were very filled with rapid change, not only for Moravian, but also for our country. The early 1970s, the end of the Vietnam War, the Black Panthers, during that time, Moravian's core, core values of being respectful, providing opportunities to discuss, debate, and educate, learning from one another, growing in understanding, advancing service and community, illustrated the platform of Moravian's education or tradition. Just as today, with so many cultural changes and political debate, Moravian continues the tradition of an environment supporting respectful discourse so all sides can be heard. And in the listening to one another, there is tremendous learning and education. Moravian has this welcoming and inclusive environment at its core. 
from Benibna and the education of girls in the mid, in the mid 1700s to my educational experience in the 1970s to the challenges on campus today in 2017. Tradition. I grew and developed as a person here at Moravian with small classes. Some of my themes of what I'm speaking of, many of you in introductions and in your remarks had the same comments. Those small classes being held accountable with the interest and support of my professors. From having dinner regularly with my Spanish professor to house sitting for my political science professor, the care and the concern transcended the classroom. That tradition continues today on campus amongst the staff, the professors, and with the students. I'd like to give some credit to Dean Lloyd as well with Student Affairs who goes out of her way, she and her staff, to have that sense of community and support for each and every student on campus. And Moravian has had the best best educational opportunities as well. It's not just about the environment. For me especially, Jan term, what I recall is that January period to travel abroad with a professor and several classmates. My freshman year to Greece for the study of ancient history, my junior year with my Spanish professor. I'm so thankful for those opportunities, those memories, and my personal growth. The kind of remarks that Gary provided about me, none of that would have been possible without Moravian. So at Moravian, I want us all to remember, we have the whole package. World-class education, tremendous campus environment, north and south campus, and I walked that Moravian mile at least twice a day when I was here for four years. <laughs> and most importantly, it's the Moravian welcoming inclusive environment for students to thrive, each in his or her own way. And then there is us, all of the alums. Moravian isn't just a place, it is tradition, and it's part of our lives. I urge all of us to continue to support Moravian through referrals of students to Moravian and financially if we can, it's a challenge for small, private, liberal arts colleges to continue and be successful. But Moravian's exceeding expectations in that regard, thanks to all of us working together. And I accept this award with really just great honor from all of you. And I acknowledge, I'd like to also acknowledge not only Russ, my husband, who as Gar Gary said, he's been there. <laughs> But my family that is also here with me this evening. Um, and I have to say that my career, my travel obligations, and my commitment to Moravian takes time. And it often takes time from other opportunities that I might like to extend with my family. To my family for their support, encouragement, and understanding. Thank you, Russ. But most especially, thank you, John our son, Kathy, and our granddaughter, Isabel. They flew in from Detroit today via Scranton. They got, de they got de um, de deferred to Scranton and then arrived here. So we've been running late all day. But um, I'm so pleased to welcome you to Moravian and to share this with you. College Alumni Association established the Hopper Humanitarian Award to honor an alumna or alumnus who has, 
who has rendered outstanding service in the cause of human welfare. Consideration is given to alumni whose service extends beyond the normal requirements of their jobs. The Hopper Humanitarian Award is not awarded every year, but only when an alumnus or alumna who is truly worthy of recognition for distinctive humanitarian service comes to the attention of the Alumni Association Executive Committee. Our 2017 recipient's dedication to helping children born with brain injuries and supporting their families is truly remarkable. And I am pleased to ask Dr. Lorraine Dickey to present Ann Flood, 1996, as our 2016 Humanitarian Award recipient. Thank you. You're all a very lovely audience of Moravian folks. I um, wanted to let Ann, in particular, but Moravian is well known that this is an incredible honor for me. Um, and I just realized it's probably a greater honor because I am not a Moravian graduate. I'm actually a graduate of the United States Air Force Academy, which also is steeped in tradition, different traditions. Um, and uh, my son went to Muhlenberg. <laughs> so, So, I think I'm a rare bird up here. <laughs> and uh, distinctly honored. Um, I don't know those of you who know Anne Flood, but I think one of the things she learned at Moravian was truly a sense of confidence, knowing who she is, and I'm not taking no for an answer. I met Anne uh, while I was a physician, and it took everything that I learned in the military and the Air Force Academy to go toe to toe with Anne Flood. So Moravian must have some incredible values that they instill in their alumni. When I think about a humanitarian award, a couple of things come to mind. This is primarily about humanity and keeping your humanity over time and pursuing that humanity into something tangible. Anne has dedicated much of the last 10 years to Lawrence Hope Foundation in honor of her, of her daughter. And I've been involved with her since then. I think one of the things about humanity for me is humility and kindness. I recently came back from uh, speaking in Australia at something called the Gathering of Kindness and looking at bringing kindness back into the world. The origin of the word kindness actually comes from uh, an old uh, Latin word, sin, C-Y-N-D, which means kin. So kindness really means kinship or family. Anne has created a family for all of those that have been involved in War and Scope. I think somewhere around 2009, 10, I was adopted into Lauren and Scope to become a member of that family as well. And uh, I think you have to understand a little bit more about kindness. Uh, there's actually three components to kindness. There's actually the person, the agent, the intention to be good. And I think most people have that. But the third most important part is actually the action. And the action as to not what you want, but what is perceived by the other, the needs of the other. So the act is kind if the other person perceives it as kindness or perceives it to be in their best interest. 
And I think Anne has toiled many, many, many long hours, <coughs> scraped nickels and dimes and quarters together to honor the wishes of the children and their families to actually do a kindness to them that they perceive as very important. So it's, the kindness is not about Anne. And it's not even about Lauren's hope. It's about the realities that she's able to create for these children with special challenges. Their parents, their families, their siblings. I think one of the best ways, or maybe even the, the way I can honor Anne the most, is to simply say that you're kind. And to thank you for that. And I think that is truly worthy of a humanitarian award. Um, I'd like to do one thing, if Anne could come up now. This is a very simple token. This is a Japanese origami crane. And the, me the legend is, if you make a thousand cranes, your wish will come true. I've made many thousands of cranes. But this crane is purple and represents the work that Lauren, that we do with Lauren's help. Okay? And I want to give this to Anne on the on behalf of me and those who work with you. I want to give her this as an authentic token of appreciation and a hope, my hope, my wish that all of it continues to go as well as it can at Lauren's Hope and that you continue to do this humanitarian work that we all need and you continue to inspire kindness. And, one. and for those who are graduating and are going on, who won the Young Moravian Hound Awards, <laughs> I beg you, as a physician, as a senior physician, I beg you, do not lose your humanity as you go forward in your studies and in your work in the world. Do not lose your humanity. If you ever were, if that wavers, <coughs> please remember and flow. Um, but I really appreciate the crane. Um, I'm so honored. I'm a little flustered right now. I didn't expect that. <laughs> um, uh, thank you so much. I'm so honored uh, to be here tonight and to be the recipient of the Hopper Humanitarian Award. I would like to thank Dr. Daphne Roten Pierce, who graduated with me in 1996. Um, who was my sorority sister at Alpha Epsilon Pi, which is now Zeta Tau Alpha, and one of my teammates um, on the track team. Um, but our friendship has endured the distance and time, and I'm so blessed to have you in my life. Um, I am also uh, to be considered for this esteemed award. is a great honor and privilege, and I'd also like to thank the Moravian College Alumni Association. My my years at Moravian was incredible. I didn't decide that I was going to go to college until my senior year in high school. And um, I set my sights on Moravian. I came with my high school for a visit in May, and I, I never turned back. This is the only place I wanted to be. And um, I applied, and I got in. I was so thankful for the opportunity to be part of this amazing community. Um, I worked really hard over four years. I got my degree um, in the sciences. I got a degree in biology. 
And um, I graduated in the spring of 1996, but I left a woman, uh, a confident woman, um, knowing that there's no challenge that I can't face in this world. My, I immediately went on um, to start a career uh, working at a research center in Bethlehem. I got married to an amazing man and soon after began a family. We decided that I would put my career on hold temporarily while having a family and we were blessed with three beautiful children and my life changed forever. Um, each child has changed my life individually, but my second child, Lauren, was born with a severe brain damage from a placental abruption. And I knew at that point that I was never going to be able to go back to the workforce again. But one of the things that I will always hold strong and dear to me at that point, and that this was in the very beginning because she was very um, compromised, is that I knew that I could face whatever challenges my life threw at me and with the education that I had taken from Moravian and my resourcefulness, I knew that I would be okay and I knew that as a woman and a parent that I was going to be able to do the best that I can as a provider and mother for my child. Um, Lauren had spastic quadriplegic cerebral palsy and a seizure disorder, cortical visual impairment, and global developmental delays. But that did not define her. She was a beautiful girl with long locks of hair and a smile that would melt your heart. She was the closest thing to God's purity and her love emanated from her. She had the amazing ability to connect with anyone who came near her without ever being able to say a word. Her young childhood was riddled with pediatric specialists and therapists of all kinds to try and help her be as independent as she could possibly be. The education that I received here at Moravian College, which included classes in human neuropsychology, ironically, and physiological psychology, um, anatomy, and many of the other science classes that I had taken in earning my degree, was largely instrumental in my ability to have meaningful and in-depth conversations with Lawrence doctors and therapists to make better informed decisions on her care and recovery. There are many occasions when life seems so hard having a child with severe disabilities, but it was during these times that I would scour the internet using my resourcefulness and asking all kinds of questions and not being afraid to confront challenges head on um, to, to find treatments and therapies that would allow Lauren to grow and develop. Then, about 10 months after Lauren was born, I learned of a treatment it was a therapy, it's a hypothermic therapy uh, that Vanderbilt University had put out. It was very bittersweet for me because it was too late for Lauren because it was for babies who were born with oxygen deprivation like Lauren was, but you have to receive the treatment within six hours of birth. So it was too late for Lauren, but at least now there is a treatment that where there once was none. We continued on for four and a half years, and Lauren was making slow but steady strides until December 19th in, um, in 2007 when she was taken from us before Christmas through the night from a seizure while she slept. It was the most devastating moment in my life, and I couldn't fathom how it just suddenly ended. We were a team, and I, I needed to do everything for her, and now it was over. But in the overwhelming moment the fog had lifted, it was like the blinds had been pulled back from my eyes. I thought that it was she who needed me, but it turns out that it was I who needed her. That beautiful little four-year-old left me with the most profound life lessons, the best gift anyone could ask for. She showed me that you do not need to speak words to make an impact. The importance of human touch, and most importantly, your life is not about what you have, but the love that you give, because in those last few moments in your life, the only thing that will ever matter is the relationships that you have forged and the love that you have, nothing else. I live by those life lessons taught to me by my four-year-old daughter every day. In the loving spirit of that little girl, Lawrence Hope Foundation was born, 
benefiting children with brain injuries. It's an absolute labor of love, and I run this foundation with the same purity of heart that Lauren had. I would like to thank my husband, Dan. I would not be standing here before you tonight if it wasn't for his undying love and support for what I do. Dan selflessly works hard at his job every day to give me the opportunity to stay home and build and advance this foundation and help other brain injured children and their families that are in need. Thank you for allowing me to be my crazy self with my crazy ideas for walking with me into a hospital telling the chief neonatologist that I had a new program that I wanted the NICU to have and then I would raise over $100,000 to give them the equipment to start a head and body cooling program at Lehigh Valley Hospital because I felt that it was important for other babies to have the opportunity that Lauren didn't have. You must have thought I was crazy. I know the doctors did. Isn't that right, Dr. Dickey? <laughs> but you, locked, you walked alongside me anyway. Also, I'd like to thank my two children, Jake and Ella. They have always been instrumental in my many aspects of the foundation since inception, from toy drives to volunteering to the many fundraisers that we do. My mother, Judy Riss Miller, who has always been my right hand throughout life. She's also the executive um, secretary for our board. My father, who worked his hide off to make sure that I was able to come here to Moravian to become the woman that I am today with the, the hardcore values and perseverance that I have because of being a student here. Thank you for making it possible for me. And I'm especially grateful for the amazing people who are the reason I am up here. My board of directors from Lawrence Hope Foundation, thank you, Dan Flood, Judy Rissmiller, Kim Rock, Patty Munshine, Tracy Jacoby, Danielle Rowland, Doug Schlegel, Vivian Folk, and Dr. D Lorraine Dickey, as well as our junior board members, Jake and Ella Flood and Brooke Jacoby. Without you, we wouldn't be able to raise the money needed to develop hypothermia programs, build fences, impact lives to those who need us most. We have more wonderful things on the horizon. And if I could just say, I would like to dedicate tonight's award to my angel Lauren, without whom none of this would have happened, my husband Dan and my two amazing children, Jake and Emma. So thank you. inspiring work and I think I uh, speak for everybody here when I think uh, it's hard not to hear that and not be inspired about, about the work that's going on in our world. So thank you. Uh, since 1941, the Alumni Association has honored one of our most distinguished alumni with the John Amos Comenius Alumni Award for outstanding achievement in his or her profession. As a distinguished leader in the field of nursing this year, this year's recipient, Margaret McClure, 1961, more than meets the criteria for this award. Here to present the 2017 Comenius Alumni Award recipient is Dr. Carrie Cheever, Department Chair and Professor of Nursing. Thank you, Willie. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is truly my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce to all of you Dr. Margaret Maggie McClure, this year's recipient of the Comenius Award. Maggie has enjoyed a long and distinguished career as a nurse leader, researcher, and clinician, and she's had a profound impact on improving the practice of nursing and, by default, the health of the nation over the course of her lifetime. Dr. McClure is, is retired as professor and vice president, chief nursing officer, and chief operating officer 
at New York University Medical Center. She was inducted as a fellow in the American, excuse me, American Academy of Nursing in 1976, the most prestigious nursing organization in the United States, and later served as its president. Of considerable note, she was named a living legend in 2007, which is the Academy's highest honor. She has also served as president of the American Organization of Nurse Executives and is a retired colonel in the United States Army. So you outrank me, Maggie. <laughs> in many ways. <laughs> I'm very proud to say. I defer to you, ma'am. <laughs> a prolific author and lecturer, Dr. McClure is best known for co-authoring the landmark report, Magnet Hospitals, Attraction and Retention of Professional Nurses. This research study, commissioned by the American Academy of Nursing, has arguably been the most influential single study to shape nursing practice and policy within the past 50 years. Findings from this report have led to the development of the American Nurses Credentialing Center's Magnet Re Hospital Recognition Program. Maggie has been quoted to note that, you didn't know that I was going to quote you, the Magnet Hospital Program has pushed us to develop evidence-based practices and nursing research, and like a rising tide, it has raised everyone's practice and standards. As a follow-up to this landmark report, Maggie published with Dr. Ada Sue Hinshaw the book Magnet Hospitals Revisited, Attraction and Retention of Professional Nurses. Maggie is a graduate of the Lackanau Hospital School of Nursing and received her master's and doctoral degrees from Teachers College Columbia University. After she received her diploma in nursing from Lackanau Hospital, she came to Moravian College to complete her bachelor's degree and she worked here as the campus nurse. And she loves to tell stories about that day when she was the campus nurse during an influenza epidemic. And uh, just yesterday I was walking through the hub and I heard a lot of barking coughs, Maggie, so I recommend <laughs> <laughs> that you stay away from our students so they may press you back into service. <laughs> A powerful and motivating speaker, well known and respected by nurse scholars throughout the globe, and I have to just make a Sedgway comment here. Whenever I go to conferences and people look at my name tag and they'll say, Moravian College, so tell us about Moravian College. And Brian, I tell them all about the NIG Nun, the 46th oldest college in the nation, and our wonderful alum and our wonderful network. And what a, what a true family type of environment this is. But I'm also shameless in that I will promote us by dropping Maggie McClure's name and say that Maggie is an alumna. And I had the experience years ago of being in, of all places, Maputo, Mozambique. And I dropped Maggie's name and I had several nurse leaders in Mozambique turn to me and say, wow, Maggie McClure, she is a dynamo. <coughs> and I agreed with them. Maggie McClure is a dynamo and a force of nature, and she credits learning the art of rhetoric to her time as a student here at Moravian College. And so it is truly my distinct honor and privilege to introduce all of you to Dr. Maggie McClure. Actually, some of the words were accurate. I was here during a, during a flu epidemic. And President Halpert called me and said, after a few days, you think we need to close the school? And I said, yes, yes, please. I've got all these people in the infirmary and they're waking me in the night. You see, the thing about being a school nurse here was you had a lovely room and bath in South Hall. But it was down the hall from the infirmary and the dispensary. I had the doctors call every, four, every day at four o'clock when sick kids came. But 
when we had the flu epidemic and all these people actually in the, infir in the infirmary overnight, and they had a button to contact me, <laughs> which worked amazingly well. <laughs> anyway, I should tell you to start that I was amazed and surprised to get the call that I was being uh, honored this award. Um, I am the worst example of an alum that you will ever find in your life. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. I think I have an excuse, maybe not, but I'm going to try. Um, you heard that I came here when I finished my diploma at Lankanel Hospital School of Nursing, and I had a commitment to the U.S. Army. They had paid me as a private on active duty during my senior year, in return for which once I became an RN, I had to serve two years. Great. But I had just enough time from the time I graduated to go to school for a semester. I have to be really honest, I had never heard of Marine College. But a classmate of mine from my, from my school of nursing lived here in Bethlehem, came from here. And her parents said to me one day, Maggie, what are you going to do when you've been through and then? And I said, I'm going to live at home and I'm going to go to Penn two nights a week and I'm going to work. And she said, you should come and live with us and go with Shirley Ann to Moravian College. <laughs> because you could afford to go full time to Moravian College. And I said, really? Wow. What's a Moravian College, I wonder? <laughs> I came. I did. It was wonderful. I have to tell you, it was a fabulous experience. It truly was. But I was only here one semester, you see. And then I left. I went in the Army. I went in for two years. Life went on. I was a little older than the rest of the class. I wasn't part of any class. And I think you would agree that you have to be part of a class to become a really devoted alum. I think you do anyway. Anyhow, that's one of my excuses. I uh, decided when I finished with the Army that I was going to get out, maybe go back in, but I had to go back and do that degree full time because going to school at night was making me crazy. And so I applied to various places and found that, in fact, they didn't like my educational start. While I was in the Army, I had taken a lot of classes that fit with the curriculum here. Not knowing that, in fact, when you do a baccalaureate in nursing, you have to have nursing in that curriculum. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway, uh, I didn't have any, of course, because I had all these wonderful things. So I said, I wonder about Moravian. Maybe I'll go back there. So I applied for the job of school nurse and got full tuition. <laughs> this little problem with the infirmary down the hall, but otherwise, it was <laughs> I'll also tell you that um, I love my time here. I had, I was transformed. You're absolutely right. Our president used the term, absolutely right. I was totally transformed. My eyes were open to all kinds of things. In preparing for today, I was wishing that I had a few more notes. I have none left for my time uh, here. I mean, after all, it was a hundred years ago. <laughs> uh, it'll be all crumpled anyhow. Um, but I was thinking about the people who taught me. I can picture them. The one name I remember is Mrs. Riley, who taught me art appreciation. Introduction to art. Oh, wow. I didn't really understand art. And I sang in the choir with Dick Shantz. And he was the eligible bachelor, so of course I tried to chase him a little bit. <laughs> turned out this Monica person was in the back. <laughs> that came later. When, when I came back to school, Monica seemed to arrive somehow. And then it seemed like she was sort of a permanent arrangement. And then they did get married and so it. <laughs> I still like him a lot, but in a different way. <laughs> okay, so... Let me say that uh, my, when I was here as the, as the school nurse, there were a group of older students, which of course meant that we were 24 and 25. There were a lot of them coming out of the service from the Korean War. That's how really old I am. And um, 
we hung out together. But again, they weren't my classmates. So I'm giving you all this background so you understand why I haven't been a very good mom. So time marched on and they had my name. You know how there's people in advance who always have your name? And they always find your phone number no matter how many times you move. And there wasn't even any internet when this story. Anyway, every once in a while I get a call from a student who would say, I'm calling from Moravian College. And you would like to, and I would say, Gee, Moravian College was a wonderful experience for me. I love that college, but you don't have a nursing program, a full-fledged nursing program, and I give my money to the nursing programs that I have been attached to. And they would say, thank you very much. I was always really nice to my love students, but I didn't give them any money. <laughs> I got a call one day, immediately following a student's call, and the person from the advancement office, probably Bertie if I'm wrong, <laughs> said to me, I have to tell you something, we now have a nursing program. We are, we are going to have a regular nursing program and we have a new person and da 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 da. And the next thing I know, I'm getting a call from somebody named Janet Sippel. How many people here have met Janet Sippel? Oh, I hope a lot of you have. She has a wonderful southern accent and a very loud voice. And I get this girl, Dr. McClure, this is Janet Sippel. I'm calling you from the baby college. <laughs> so, so she loved me. What could I do? I would like to, though, in all seriousness, say to you, Janet Sippel is one hot ticket. <laughs> This college was, and nursing, was very lucky, and by the way, patients, very lucky that she came here to do the work that she did in order to begin our nursing program. She took on a, a big, difficult, almost impossible job, and today we have a fabulous program with another fabulous leader, Carrie Cheever. They are doing such a great job, and then that new building. I came to the opening of the new building and was so blown away. So I wanted to reassure you that I am now giving money. join me in extending our sincere congratulations to all of our recipients. And, and you will have the opportunity to congratulate our award recipients in person at the reception immediately following the ceremony. Uh, before you leave, I would like to ask all presenters and award recipients, students included, to come to the stage area for additional photos immediately following the ceremony. Uh, tonight's reception will be held in Pater Hall, which is located on the second floor of this building. As you exit this room, please make a right and take either the stairs or the elevator to the second floor, following signs for Pater Hall. After exiting the stairs or the elevator, follow the hallway down to the reception. <laughs> Students and staff will be pre present along the way to assist you. Those with tickets for tonight's Vespers will walk over as a group a little before 7 p.m. Please gather by the entrance doors of Pater Hall and staff and students will guide you to church. Thank you again for coming and enjoy the rest of your evening.